Hey, what's going on? Uh, I got a great question today about the sinker. And if you've been subscribed to my channel for any time now, you know that the sinker is my favorite pitch. It's a pitch that anyone can use any age uh, to get batters out. It's a great swing and miss pitch. In fact, I credit it to being the reason why I got drafted and ended up playing professional baseball. Um, so I've got tons of videos on the sinker and I'm going to uh, reference a few of those uh, later in this video, but I got the question today is about the sinker from Tombo Bronk, and he says, "Coach, how do you increase the drop on a sinker? I practice it every time I throw a bullpen session, and can only get about two to three inches of drop. Can you please answer this question? Yes, I can answer this question. Uh, thank you for that question. That is a great question. If you guys have any questions about baseball, pitching, hitting, whatever it is." please leave it down in the comments below now. And I'd love to help answer those questions as well. As for the sinker, um, I talk about the grip uh, in many different videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link to a few of those videos down below. If you're wondering about the sinker grip, then you're gonna go check out one of those videos. But I wanna get a little more in depth about how to get more downward movement, how to get more sink on the sinker, right? He says, uh, Tombo says he's getting about two to three inches, which isn't bad. You know, getting a little bit of drop on it. And if you're throwing the ball fast, which you should, that's the, that's the first thing I want to talk about is uh, you should throw this ball fast. It's a, to me, it was a fastball variation. I was throwing the sinker as fast as I possibly could. So it wasn't a, a pitch to change speeds on guys and get depth. No, it was to throw it as fast as possible and get depth. So you're not going to get as much depth as you would on like a 12-6 curveball uh, that you do with your sinker, at least if you're throwing it max effort and try to get full speed on it. My sinker was typically uh, one mile an hour less than my four seam, which I didn't throw very often. The only time I threw the four seam, uh, well, there's two different times I threw the four seam, in early to lefties and then uh, out, like if I had two strikes, I might, we used to do what was called a six spot, which would be the catcher would set up off of the plate and I'd throw a four seam there so it didn't run back over the plate. Um, so those were really the only two times that I threw four seams ever. Um, but my sinker was only one mile an hour slower than my four seam. So, and I threw my, the fastest I ever threw was 96 miles an hour. So you can throw the sinker very fast. Uh, and that's what you want to do. So don't expect huge, huge movement. Um, but then again, the more movement, the better, right? Obviously, if you, if you can get uh, six inches instead of two to three inches, that's obviously a lot better. So how do we do that? The big thing with the sinker is that you want to make sure that your arm angle and your wrist angle are promoting good depth. What do I mean by that? It's going to depend on where your arm angle is, right? I was a lower arm angle guy, so I was a pretty much straight side arm, right? When I was being really effective with my sinker. Um, and then, so for me, when I cut, come over top, this is, I'm just going to show you the grip real quick. Just a quick uh, look at the grip. But if you want more understanding of the grip, again, check the links down below. But what I would do is I would come straight over top. So I, this is called pronation. It's good for decelera uh, deceleration. It's good to protect your arm. Uh, and that's why this pitch, I believe, is safe for any age because we're not really doing any crazy stuff uh, on like snapping a curveball or anything like that. Uh, we're staying right here and I'm tr just trying to rip right over top at my release point. So I'm trying to get this lace right here and I'm trying to almost, it's almost like I bring my fingers forward uh, but, but I'm trying to have my wrist go with it, if that makes sense. So I'm not like, I'm not coming over top, just rolling straight this way over top. I'm kind of like leaning with my hand almost as I come over it, if that makes sense. And the feeling is right over top. I'm ripping right over top and I'm trying to get this lace. If I'm throwing straight this way, I'm trying to pull this lace straight down here, this, this way, right? So that's what's gonna give it that angle of depth right here, right? So I'm taking this ball and I'm ripping right over top here. And I'm trying to get that downward uh, arm side movement, more downward than arm side, right? Because more downward movement is gonna have more swing and misses. If you're moving more arm side, that could still be on the, the plane of the, the swing, right? Because the swing is not, you know, guys don't swing level. I know you hear coaches say swing level all the time, but guys don't swing level. We actually swing slightly upward, right? So if you're throwing more arm side than downward, you might stay right on that, on that bat path. But if you can get more depth on it, 
they start that swing and then you're going to come off of the plane of the of the of the bat right the pitch is going to come off of the plane of the bat and that's why the sinker is such a successful pitch because if you can do that if you can change planes on your pitches and you can make it move late and downward it's tough to hit and if they do hit it a lot of times they just pound it into the ground and you're getting a lot of ground balls and you know even if you're not a swing and miss, like if you can't get your sinker to be a swing and miss pitch, it's still effective. Like even on the days my sinker wasn't working great, it was still an effective pitch because guys would just beat it into the ground. You know, my infielders would have to work a lot that day. Uh, but, you know, it was actually easier for me on those days because I didn't have to, if it wasn't working as good, I didn't have to force it. I didn't have to try to make anything work. All I worried about was that sink, that depth. Because if you do that, Guys are going to hit the ball on the ground, and you got five infielders behind. Well, well, four infielders behind you. You are an infielder yourself. Don't forget, pitchers are the best athletes on the field. Uh, so we're feeling our position as well. And, you know, the, yeah, they have to work more that day, but just focus on the depth of the pitch. Now, when it's really working and guys are just looking stupid, I remember guys swinging. I threw a pitch before to righties a couple of times where they would swing and the ball would hit them in the foot. Like then that day, I'm like, okay, it's working good today. And then I was looking for more strikeouts because I had a lot more swing and misses with it. And, uh, you know, and th those days are fun because nobody's hitting your stuff, but also you're throwing more pitches now too. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's okay not to have the, the, the super sink on it, okay? If you're getting that two to three inches one day and they're beating it into the ground, Okay, don't be mad about that. You don't always have to throw swing and miss pitches, okay? Obviously, it's good. Obviously, that is a, a, a good sign that you have that in the tank, um, but you don't always have to have that. I didn't have that every single outing, every single time I stepped on the mound, okay? But obviously, the main thing that you wanna focus on is staying on top of the ball. Now, let's talk about if you're not a straight sidearm guy, right? Because what if you're not a straight sidearm like me, right? What if you're like a three quarters guy? Now, to get over this ball and get the sinker, you have to drop that wrist angle slightly and come over this way, okay? Let me scoot back a little bit so you can see. So if I'm here, like a three quarter, I'm gonna have to come over the ball this way. So I have, my wrist angle changes a little bit. For me, I could stay right in line with the arm, right? And come right over, rip right over. For a three quarter guy, he's gonna have to change his wrist angle a little bit and come over the top. For a guy who's uh, a little bit higher, um, in the delivery, like a like a traditional guy, straight over overhand guy, is really going to have to really rip on top of that ball as they get out to release point this way. It's a lot harder, in my opinion. It's harder for a, a traditional over overhand guy to get more downward movement. They can get a lot of arm side movement on a two seam sinker, but it's hard for them to get uh, that downward movement. But it can be done. There's a lot of traditional pitchers who are or, or, or over the top who uh, can get that, that wrist angle right at release point, pronate through it and get some good sink on it. So um, don't be discouraged if you are an overhand guy, but typically I see a lot more success with like the three quarter guys, low three quarter guys, sidearm guys, and then obviously your submarine guys, that's all they're throwing is sinkers. So that's a, that's a really great question. I hope that answered it. Again, I'm gonna leave some links to some other sinker videos down below. Um, so if you want to learn more about the sinker, um, you can check them out. I'll also leave the link to my advanced sinker and slider training program. Again, I, I, I think that the sinker is what got me drafted. You know, I, I started throwing the slider as well, and that became the uh, best pitch, the number one pitch in all of the San Diego Padres organization uh, my first year in Pro Bowl. After, that was the first year I started learning it. So if you want to learn more about the sinker and the slider, check that out. It's on sale right now. Um, and again, thank you so much for the question. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. That's what I'm here for. I want to help answer you guys and be the best baseball players that you can be. So thank you again. If you haven't subscribed already, please do because I got some good stuff coming out for you. Check it out.